Guys, welcome back to Medical Coding with Blue. Today's episode is all about medical coding and ethical issues. What do you do <laughs> if you run into an ethical issue? If you're brand new to my channel, welcome. I am Blue, I'm a medical coder. Okay guys, so I got a really good question from a viewer um, earlier this week asking about this very thing. What do you do when you're being asked to do something that you know is wrong, right? How do you handle this? So I am going to read the comment and then we're going to get into the episode. So let us begin. All right. So the viewer says, hi, Blue. Um, thanks for all of the info. Really appreciate what you're doing to help others. Just wanted to ask, as a medical coder, what do you do when you face ethical dilemmas? What if sometimes you may have been told to code things a certain way when you know they aren't correct or in policy? In such a situation, is there any way around it? Or do you have to just give in to this sort of situation and follow what you have been told? Because I don't want to get myself into something where I have to compromise my integrity, I'd like to work with honesty. So here we go. All right, first of all, <laughs> we don't go along to get along. That's number one, as medical coders, you don't go along to get along. Now, if they're telling you something that your supervisor or the, the coding educator is saying something, and of course they have their supporting documentation, they have something to support why they're saying this, then obviously, yes, you can go with something that is reputable and you don't have to sit there and argue and go back and forth. And obviously, yes, you're going to um, update your, your own <laughs> knowledge and be like, okay, this is the correct way to do this. This is what I'm learning now. So that is fine, you know, to do something like that. So, um, yes, you want to be able to stand up for something that is not, um, if you find that it is not correct, you need to stand up and say something. You cannot just go along to get along because at the end of the day, your name is on that submission of those codes that were selected, whether it is going to the insurance company or it is, you know, on their in-house thing, your name is attached to it. And the AHIMA standards of ethical coding that everybody follows, regardless of if you are um, certified with AAPC or somebody else, or you're not certified at all, everybody follows the AHIMA standards of ethical coding because they are the leader. AHIMA, the American Health Information Management Association, is the leader. They are the ones that wrote that. <laughs> and so that's all of our rules. Those are our ethical rules. And this is what we have to uh, adhere to as professionals. So I encourage you guys to check it out. I'm going to leave that link for the AHIMA standards of ethical coding in the description box below, <laughs> along with this article that answers this very question. Literally, <laughs> it says here, what should I do if I am asked to implement a coding practice you believe uh, to be fraudulent? What do you do, <laughs> sorry, if you are asked to uh, implement a coding practice that you believe to be fraudulent. Here are the things that you need to do according to the AHIMA website. And again, I will be leaving this article in the description box below. So guys, please check the description box. All right. Um, so number one, it says compile documentation, for example, issues of coding clinic supporting your position. So when you are being told to implement a incorrect fraudulent coding practice, and you know, this is wrong, then you need to go to things like coding clinic, or you need to go to the CPT assistant. You need to look for, for some guidance from the American Medical Association, from a CMS, somebody that's official, okay? Not just, oh, we do medical billing and coding.com. <laughs> uh, it needs to be from an official source, right? Um, again, AHA, the AMA, uh, CMS, you know, it needs to be something like that. And so something that shows that is supporting what you're saying to be correct, okay? We never go along to get along, okay, guys? We have to stand up for what is right. And there's going to be people that are going to get upset with you. And especially if you're brand new and you're you're questioning this and, and they can't come up with a solid response to your uh, question, you know, that's something that you can't be afraid to stand up. And you can't be afraid to say, well... I don't understand, you know, this, this, uh, this does not say this, you know? So that's the thing that you have to be willing to stand up and do the right thing. Because at the end of the day, we are responsible guys. We are responsible and culpable for everything that we select. So keep that in mind when you are out there. 
Um, these rules fall onto everybody. And ignorance of the law is never an excuse, okay? So the second thing it says, meet with your supervisor to discuss the issue. Show him or her the documentation supporting the inappropriateness of the coding practice in question. Discuss the potential implications of implementing this practice, like fraud charges. Guys, it is so important that you are able to communicate uh, professionally and that you stay calm and that you're going, you may be getting yelled at, right? Somebody may get upset that, oh no, you, you don't know what you're talking about. You don't know what you're doing. Remain professional, okay guys? And even if you have to kind of rehearse these things, but have your supporting documentation with you. Sometimes people say, oh yes, let's do this. And they didn't know that there's something out there, right? And then you bring it to them. And if they are remembering the AHIMA standards of ethical coding, they'll be like, oh yes, okay. <laughs> uh, you're right, you know? That's in the perfect world, right? But we don't live in a perfect world. So moving on, it says, if the meeting with the supervisor is unsuccessful, arrange a meeting with the department director. If this meeting is also unsuccessful in resolving the issue, meet with the administrator to whom your department director reports. So there's always going to be a chain of command. There's always going to be a line, right? Of, okay, you start off with your immediate supervisor, and then if it doesn't work, then you go to this person, then you go to that person, you go to that person. So it is important to know who your chain is. The important thing is, is that you're covering yourself. These are very important issues. And as professionals, we all know we are supposed to adhere to these. Okay. So, um, if your facility, number four says, if your facility is owned by a corporation, um, you might consider taking the issue to the corporate level if you are unable to resolve it internally. Now, the best case scenario is that you, that you solve it on the lowest possible level. You always want to solve things on the lowest possible level because the higher it gets, the higher the stakes, right? Um, because, you know, it, it, people hear about things. <laughs> Everything rolls downhill. We all know this, okay? Um, and then it says number five, you may consider suggesting that an objective third party, such as a consultant you trust and respect, be brought in and asked for their opinion. It's the same thing if there are uh, if you are in an area that has union representatives. For some people who work in hospitals, they have union representatives. This is a good time for them to be brought in uh, to support you, and you can explain what's going on. Uh, that's why they have them there. So that is another option if you are a union member. Okay, something that you can use to support you. Okay, if not, um, you know, just try to find an advocate, like they said. A consultant who can say well yes you know somebody else who can support you all right that has some authority uh, to say well yes I do agree with this person you know this they're they're showing appropriate uh, advice here you know and number six it says if all these efforts are unsuccessful and you are still being asked to implement a coding practice send a memo to your supervisor, department director, CFO, and CEO. Keep a copy in for your files. You gotta make sure that you, if you send this, you print it out, okay? Uh, in this memo, describe the issue, your opposition to uh, the coding practice and your reasons for your opposition and all of your efforts to date to resolve the matter. So again, you're not gonna, that's not gonna be your first line of defense. It's going to be, I spoke with my first line supervisor on this date and this occurred or this this happened you know there, there was nothing resolved or whatever and you say i met with the next person on this date and i met with the next person on this date show that you have attempted to solve this on the lowest level possible and keep professional whatever you do stay professional okay and it says um uh, in this memo describe the issue and your opposition to the coding practice and your reason for opposition and all of your efforts to date to resolve the matter cite all official sources backing your position since the cfo and ceo might not be familiar with the coding guidelines explain what official coding guidelines are and who approves them i.e the four cooperating parties the national center for health statistics health care a financing administration, the American Hospital Association, and the American Health Information Management Association. Explain the potential for fraud charges and penalties involved. You might also mention the AHIMA Code of Ethics and your professional obligation to abide by it. 
While there are no guarantees this memo will prevent the coding practice from being implemented or continuing, it will protect you from being the scapegoat if the facility is ultimately charged with fraud. Uh, it will also help to prevent your professional conduct from being questioned. So you did try to say something. You did try to stand up and protect what is right so that the integrity of these um, codes that are being selected is appropriate. So that's the thing that you have to be able to cover yourself there. But again, keep in mind everything that you're seeing on this memo it could potentially reach a larger audience. So you want to make sure that it's formally written, that it's very well written. Use something to help you like Grammarly. Uh, this is not an ad for Grammarly, but they are a very good, <laughs> uh, uh, just a thing to, to double check how your wording sounds, okay? Number seven, depending on the seriousness of the issue, you may wish to consider terminating your employment at this facility in order to avoid being associated with a fraudulent practice in any way. If fraud charges are being brought against this facility and there are there is publicity surrounding this case, you could find yourself in an untenable position. Your opposition to the fraudulent practice may not be widely known as the fact that you are a coder from a facility charged with coding fraud. This reputation could make job hunting very difficult. And as somebody who has worked hard to get your medical coding certification and all of the hours that you have spent um, trying to do this, ultimately at the end of the day the codes that you select are your responsibility so you can't just say oh my supervisor said that i had to do it that way did you stand up for yourself did you say something okay so that is the thing that you need to think about um and number eight it says finally if you decide to become a whistleblower consider all the ramifications very carefully although the laws protect whistleblowers from employer retaliation, it could be very difficult for you to continue to work at that facility. Whistleblowers are often considered a threat to the business community, so you could find yourself blackballed and unable to find another job since whistleblowing can be can have serious consequences both you and your both for you personally as well as for the healthcare organization. Make sure you have sufficient documented evidence of the fraudulent activity before blowing the whistle. So that is something that you have to keep in mind. Yes, there are going to be some disputes when it comes to how to code and things like that. But again, if you have the coding rules on your side and you have made all of these attempts to make sure that you are coding accurately, you know, then again, you know, you could consider trying to find a different place of employment or, you know, consider doing what it was talking about before, which is the whistleblowing. And again, you have to really consider um, what you're doing before you do that. Because sometimes people just jump the gun. They didn't uh, say that, you know, they didn't, they didn't properly prepare themselves for this type of, of uh, outcome. Okay, so uh, it, it is difficult <laughs> um, to answer these questions as far as like, how do we handle this type of situation? And, you know, what do we do? But at the end of the day, when you're thinking about your career, your livelihood, you need to make sure that you are doing everything appropriately. We never go along to get along. We always make sure that everything that we're doing is being supported. Uh, and it doesn't matter how they try to tell you, yes, you will do this. If it is wrong, do not do it. And as somebody that really loves this field, I will tell you guys that it is not worth it um, to listen to somebody who is who is trying to give incorrect guidance and that's just my advice anyway so i hope this video has helped uh, i know that there's lots of questions all the time about these things but again you know working on your communication skills and and being able to express yourself um as as professionally as possible goes a long way into these things getting the support that you need from from advocates that you know have a little bit of more of power as far as like well you know this this other person that's in the department uh who's also a supervisor supports what you're saying and get them to kind of help uh in this situation that would be a great thing so that's just my advice anyway but again i will leave these links in the description box below so please check them out i wish you all the best if you are going through this situation 
Um, again, you do have options out there. So that's just my advice anyway. Thank you guys so much for joining me. If this video helped you, please like, subscribe, and share. And I will see y'all next time. Bye.